on three-dimensional graphs, we're going to be talking about a couple of different types of graphing systems that you're not used to particularly. All right, the first one we're going to be talking about is the three-dimensional graph. Now, if you three, you see we have uh, the three-dimensional graph. It's a lot like ones you already know, the x and y coordinate plane. All right, we have the x and the y. We know that. Now we're going to add a third dimension. See, this is two. Now we're going to add a third dimension, and it's going to be the z plane. So again, when you write our points, it's always going to be x, y, z, alphabetical order. Should be easy to remember. All right, now, sometimes you'll see this if you do this in another class or later on in college, perhaps. You may see the x and the y switched or the z switched. Just remember, however it is, you just got to play along with that, that coordinate system, all right? But most of the time, this third dimension, the z axis, will be right here on um, the vertical, what we wouldn't think of as the vertical axis before. Um, so we're going to show you two different ways to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is the box way. All right. So I'm going to go to three on my x coordinate. So now normally I go x, but I'm, I have to go my x coordinate. So one, two, three. So I'm going to draw like a box here. So here's three on my x. All right. Then I'm going to go four on, over on my y. So that's positive. So one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to draw this like a parallelogram, one, two, three, four. All right, so you can kind of see what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna draw a three-dimensional box, and then I'm gonna go down, my Z is negative two, so one, two. So this is my Z, so I'm gonna to have to go down two on all of these, and I have this parallelogram, all right? One, two. And I'm not great at drawing them, as you can tell. It's not the easiest thing to do. All right, so which one of these corners is the point we want? Well, we want it over, so it's 3 on the X, 4 over, and then down 2, right here. Okay? So 3 on the X, 4 over, and down 2. So when you do this, part of the thing is you kind of have to show... Um, one of the two methods I'm going to show you. The reason is now you can see that this makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And I'm always going to kind of put an arrow to which point I want. All right. So let's do another one. All right. Let's do negative three, zero, one. So negative three, I'm going to go negative three on my x. That's backwards. Negative three. All right, zero on my y, so I'm not going to go over at all, and then up one on my x, so up one on my x. All right, now check this out. This is kind of not really three-dimensional. It's not going to the third dimension because their y is zero, and it would be right here. All right, it would be right there. So that's the box method. All right, let's do one more. Let's say I went and I had this, and I did negative three, two, one. All right, so negative 3, 2, 1. So we already know we are negative 3 back on our x. Uh, 2, okay, now we need to go 2 over on the y. So 2 over here. All right, I'm going to go over 2 here. going to make this all like a parallelogram. I need to go up 1, right? Up 1. Connect these. I got my box. All right, so which one of these... Uh, you know, eight points is negative three back, two over, and one up. It's right here. Okay, negative three over, two back, up one. And that's kind of going to lead into the next method. I'm going to go negative three back, and I'm going to draw an arrow. I'm going to go two over, I'm going to draw an arrow, and then I'm going to go up one and draw an arrow. So let's take a look at that method right now. So four, negative two, negative one. So four... One, two, three, four, and I'm going to draw an arrow that way. Negative two on my y. So now, see, the trick here is you got to understand, you got to get about here, right? So I'm going to go negative two over on my y, and then I'm going down one. So down one whole spot is right here, all right? And that would be my point. Now, it looks, you know, it looks as though it matches up with three, doesn't it? But you have to understand, I'm going dimensional. That's why I think the box sometimes is a little bit easier for people to understand. You can kind of see when you do this box that it is in fact one down. But I'm just showing you another way to do it. You can do it with arrows, you can do it with the box, either way you want. 
Let's try another one. Zero, negative three. So zero on the x. I don't go front or back. I'm going to go negative three on my y. And then I'm going to go four up. All right. Straight up four. And there's my point. All right, so now we have those two methods. You can do either one you want. Honestly, I like the box. I think it shows the three dimensions a little bit better, and probably that's what I'm going to do on the um, answer keys so you can see that better. I know it looks a little funny, but I think it really helps you understand that that's a three dimension. All right, so just like in the uh, xy coordinate plane, we have a midpoint formula. All right, between two points, we can find out the midpoint. All right, so let's take a look here at our midpoint formula. All right, and it's exactly the same. Uh, our old midpoint formula in two dimensions was x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And now it's going to be exactly the same thing here. We're just going to do, we're going to add the z to it. So let's say we had the points um, 2, 4, and 7, uh, and then negative 8, 5, Three. Let's find the midpoint of that. So we would do 2 plus negative 8 over 2, comma, 4 plus 5 over 2, comma, 7 plus 3 over 2, and then we would get, so 2, that's negative 6 over 2, negative 3, 9 over 2 is 4.5, and 10 over 2 is 5. Pretty easy stuff. Again, this is actually a pretty easy section, I think. All right, let's try uh, the distance formula. Distance formula, same thing. The distance formula in two dimensions and three dimensions is very similar. The only thing we do is we add a z coordinate over here. Okay, it's the exact same two-dimensional formula. Maybe you remember that from um, geometry. It's the exact same formula. So let's try it here. So we have negative 8 minus 2 squared plus 5 minus 4 squared plus 3 minus 7 squared. Put that in. Let's see. Negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 4 squared. Uh, still hard to believe I see this mistake out of kids. Negative 10 squared is a positive 100. Remember, you're going to square all these. And when you square a negative, it's a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So this would be the square root of 117, which, if we approximate it, would be 10.8. All right. So why don't you pause the video right now and find the midpoint between these two points right here. All right, so if you take a look, we have negative 3 plus 4 over 2, 5 plus negative 8 over 2, negative 9 over negative 1, or negative 9 plus negative 1 over 2, and it gets us down to 0 0.5, negative 1 and a half, and negative 5. We plug those in over here, we get 7 squared plus negative 13 squared plus 8 squared, and it takes us down to 282. Hopefully that wasn't too tough. All right, so now we're going to graph a linear equation in three variables. We have an x, a y, and a z. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're actually going to find the intercepts. So remember, if I want to be on the x-axis, just on the x-axis, all I care about is the x-axis. That means my y is 0 and my z is 0. When y is 0, it cancels out, right? When z is 0, that cancels out, and I have negative 8x equals 24. So my x-intercepts divide by negative 8 is going to be negative 3. So let's go put it point on negative 3. When I do the same thing for my y, my z would be 0, my x would be 0, and then 8y equals 24, so y would be positive 3. So my y-axis, I go to positive 3. And then when I have my z, my x and my y would be 0, so negative 12z equals 24, and so z would be negative 2 down here. All right, so now what we need to do is connect all three of these points, and we're going to have a triangle, all right? Now, you have to remember that this is a plane, so it's actually this every region in here shaded together. Now, this is kind of hard to see, but because... 
If we were to expand this, it's a plane, and it's going to expand this way and this way and this way. Imagine if you were holding up a piece of paper. A piece of paper is not triangular, but it's a it's a plane. It goes in every direction just as much as a um, triangle does, all right? And so it would go this way. Would, you can kind of see it's slanted down this way, all right? It's hard to see in two-dimensionally, but it's not um, that hard to draw two-dimensionally. It's just kind of hard to visualize. So when we come over here, we have the same thing. If I want to find my x-intercept, 4x is going to equal, these are gone, 12, so x would be 3. So I go over 3, 1, 2, 3. If I want my y-intercept, 6y would equal 12. y would be 2. And 3z would equal 12. 3z equals 12. z would equal 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We would connect our three intercepts. And then that area right there shaded in would be our graph, all right? Um, sometimes, imagine if you will, this x-intercept is gone, okay? So let's come on over here. Let's pretend that we didn't have negative 8x at all, okay? Let's pretend this negative 8x is gone. Bye-bye, negative 8x. You've been good, but now you're gone, okay? So that means there is none of this here. Okay, so my x-axis, this is gone. So now all I have is my y and my z. So let's take a look and see what that would look like. I have my y is 3. Oh, excuse me. My y is 3. And my z is negative 2. Now if I connect those, it looks like this, right? It would be a straight line. Now, that plane would go through that forever and ever, but when I'm looking at it right here, it just looks like a straight line. Okay, but it is a plane. It's going up and down, straight up and down, forever and ever, going uh, through those two points. It never hits the x-axis, though. All right, and it's kind of hard to see two-dimensionally. All right, well, best of luck on that. Good luck on the match check, and I will see you on the flip side.